not good at math. I don't understand numbers. I've never been good at it. I never will be good at it. Have you ever heard similar things coming from maybe one of your children, your students, or maybe this is part of your own internal dialogue and it is so common. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to change that dialogue and flip it around so that you can actually do better in math and perhaps even other areas of your life that you didn't think you could learn or improve your skills in. I'm Janice and you're watching Sharp Cookie. On this channel, we talk about all the things related to learning and problem solving. So please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. I post new videos every week. This video is actually part of a series I'm doing on mindset and also the growth versus fixed mindset. Because what I've discovered is mindset is half the equation for learning. If you approach learning from a place of, yes, I can do this and I will persist and I will learn this if I accumulate the skills necessary to learn it, it's very different from the approach of, I'm terrible at math and I will always be bad at math. You can see how the one approach is very different from the other and that's really what we're gonna discuss and how it applies to you. All right, why is this relevant? Well. They've done a lot of studies on this and they've actually found that this belief that you either have a math brain or a math gene or you don't is very, very common in the US school system. And I have an idea it's probably common in other countries and their school systems as well. This is the belief that most of the people that come to me have. They are, and I'm gonna, we're using math for this video, but plug in whatever you want, reading skills, comprehension skills, language skills, whatever it is. But for this video, let's focus on math. The pervasive belief in the US is you either have the math gene and then those people already good at math, we encourage them more, or you don't, and then those kids just think that they're dumb. All right, the first thing I wanna do addressing this myth to you and maybe your parent or a teacher address it to your student, and tell them that this is just not how the brain works. There's a lot of research being done in neuroplasticity, and it's very clear at this point that the brain is not fixed. You are not born either knowing trigonometry or not. Like, these are skills you can learn. And if you believe you can do better, you will, which is why those students that are already praised and think they have a math brain end up doing even better, because they're going into it with this attitude of knowing that they will succeed, knowing that they can learn what they want to learn instead of you know the more defeatist sense of like well, well i didn't get the math gene and therefore i will avoid every job with math i'll avoid every math class that will ever come to me and i will never do math again it's a very poor attitude and it's and it's not correct like i said it's just not true the science the research shows neuroplasticity is real your brain adjusts depending on the stimulus that you apply to it. Now I've done a whole nother video explaining the growth versus fixed mindset by Carol Dweck. If you haven't seen that video, please watch it because the other body of research around this is that if you believe that you can improve a skill, you are three times more likely to improve it. So that's what we mean by growth mindset. If you approach something thinking you can grow in that area versus you're just fixed and you're always gonna have a bad math brain, just by changing your belief system that, hey, what would happen if I did 30 math problems a day? What would happen? I would probably get better. Just that realization can change everything. And that's something I actually tell my students. I'm like, okay, so if you practiced soccer for three hours a day versus nothing, do you think you get, would get better? And they say yes, okay. What if you practice guitar for three hours a day every day? You think you would get better? Okay. What if you practice math problems for three hours of a day? Would you get better? And then their mind starts to open up because they see it as a skill similar to sports and musical instruments, which perhaps they see as growth mindset. Maybe they don't. Actually, some people are very fixed in terms of how they view their athletic abilities and music abilities. And again, this is also a myth thinking that, oh, I'm bad at sports and I'm not athletic and I can, I will never be able to coordinate hand-eye coordination and, or music. 
I'm, I'm bad at music. Well, what does that do? It, it shuts your life off from, from these things that can be so enriching. And again, it's not true. Neuroplasticity, guys. So Google that. It's not true. So if you have these beliefs, do the research on your own, on neuroplasticity, on the growth versus mixed mindset. Watch the videos so that you can change your belief system and really open yourself up to areas that math and other areas that you have been closed off to. All right, the number one tip I wanna impress upon you is to focus on the process. So stop thinking in terms of black and white. Either I'm good at math or I'm bad at math and that's it. Start thinking about it as a spectrum, okay? Like everything. No matter what you do, there's playing piano. You're, you're not either here or there. There's a giant spectrum in between of different skill levels. And it's the same thing with math. Understand that it's a spectrum. It's not I'm good or bad and that's it. That's step one. Step two is valuing the process of going from step to step to step, okay? Just because you don't wake up all of a sudden having this deep understanding of calculus does not mean what you're doing is useless. Value the process. Value, okay, doesn't matter. I'm going to focus on the process. I'm going to do an hour of, you know, watching calculus videos on Khan Academy or doing some calculus problems or getting a tutor or whatever it is. I'm going to spend an hour doing it and I'm going to do that three days a week and I'm going to focus on the step by step by step. You don't know how many times kids don't even realize, and adults, the progress that they're making because all they can see is the end point and they feel that because they're not at that end point, then they're worthless, the process is worthless. No, I have to constantly remind them, remember where you were three months ago? Three months ago, you didn't even know how to divide two fractions. You didn't even know how to find 10% of something. You didn't, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes it's a matter of giving someone perspective and saying, can we just stop for a minute and reflect on like how far you came? Like, let's think about that. Think about your mental math skills. When I had asked you to do 30 times 45, you couldn't do that in your head. Like now it's easy for you. Let's think about that. And that encourages you to think about the value of the process. So. If you're the teacher, the coach in this situation, show the learner the value of the process. Show them how far they've come. If you're the person that's trying to become better at math, as you go along, reflect back on where you were last week, last month, two months ago. Reflect on how far you've come, not on some end goal in your mind of being good that you haven't reached. Part of valuing the process is also valuing the mistakes. So you need to, either in your own mental dialogue again, or if you're coaching someone else verbally, tell them this. The mistakes are part of the process and the mistakes are actually helping you. Why? Because your brain's still growing, okay? So I always like giving examples at the gym. Maybe you're lifting weights and one day you're at whatever, 10 pounds, and then you're at 15, and then you're at 18, and you try for 20, and you can't do it. Well, that doesn't mean you're a failure, okay? Just attempting the 20 is working you, right? Or doing the 19. So think about it as, again, there's, there's a range, and you're moving step by step, and just because you failed at the 20 pounds doesn't mean you're a failure. There was value in trying. There, there were things that you learned just by attempting. Your brain was growing just by thinking about math problems, your brain grows. And I tell kids, even if you do half the problem, connections were made in your brain that wouldn't have been made had you not done it. So again, stop thinking in terms of pass or fail, right or wrong, good or bad. Think in terms of a spectrum. Okay, maybe I didn't get it right, but I made all these really important conclusions along the way. And just because I didn't get to that final answer doesn't mean the whole exercise was pointless. All right, last thing I wanna talk about is remove the emphasis on speed. So I actually remember this as being a kid. We would play this game 24 
and it was about how fast you could combine four numbers to get to 24. And there was usually a kid in my group who was just like, bam, 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 and he like killed it. He would have a whole stack of cards and beat the rest of us. And this is an example of putting too much emphasis on speed. Now, I love that game. I think it serves a purpose, but not when you're competing on speed with someone else because actually what it does is it discourages the learner from actually learning because learning doesn't happen on a certain time frame, okay? You could take, I love giving whoever I'm working with plenty of time to think. They need thinking time. More than that, if someone feels like they're on a clock, they're actually gonna do worse if it's like, oh my God, oh my God, I need to go, I need to go. Creates anxiety, all sorts of things. So please, teachers, everybody, coaches, and for yourself, stop putting pressure on yourself to just do all math really quickly. Give yourself thinking time. Thinking time is time where your brain is growing and making connections that we talked about. So please remove all the emphasis on speed. Now, further down the line, when you're confident, you're feeling good, you wanna develop your abilities more, fine, do speed math, enjoy it, have fun with it. But you're probably watching this video because you're not there yet. And when you're in these early stages of building your confidence and understanding neuroplasticity and understanding the growth mindset, you need to value learning and value time spent on learning and not focus on speed or getting from here to there and that's it and how fast. That's it for today's video. I'm gonna link up a bunch of resources on this topic, such as the growth and fixed mindset in the description. I also have a link for joining our community Facebook group called Sharp Cookie Community, where we join together and we talk about a lot of nerdy topics related to learning and problem solving. So find us on there, join us on Facebook. It's so many people tell me how much like they go on Facebook because they enjoy like the discussions we have and we think about how many different ways there is to solve something. The other thing I offer is coaching and tutoring and I can do it all virtually. So please email me at hellosharpcookie at gmail.com. So thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, go ahead and share it with someone else. Watch it with someone else. Watch it with your kids. It's so important that we create more dialogue around the process of learning. So I'm Janice again. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.